Wait a minute. I promise I'll do anything you want to do back there. Anything. If you let me listen to the beginning of this picture. Okay? All right? Okay, come on. <laughs> Will you cut it out? Let me get come it. Come on, Alan. Sweetheart. Come I just, on. I just want to hear this. Come on. I just, I, I just want to hear something. Come on, I'm not nice. Come on, you stop tickling Alan, me. come on. Get in here. Alan. Come on, will you let me more time. I want to hear it. Alan, come on. Will you let me hear it? Alan, come on. Oh, 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 I want to hear it. Oh, Prince were the victims, a couple of local kids. Now, I'm sorry too, Captain. Headlines like those, it's going to be Panic City in here any time now. Yeah. I don't know why we don't have headlines that big when we win one. Because of that, every nut in town's going to be on the phone claiming credit. On top of that, we'll have to check them all out. Did anybody see anything at all? Ah, uh, between the screaming and the sirens, most of the cars split. Oh, we got a few names and numbers. They've been checked out now. Let's hope somebody came up for air long enough to see something. Yeah, it must have been King Kong. Yeah, one clean swipe on each victim. Well, let's take it from the top, get the owner. I checked him out. He's been living in Hawaii for about a year now. But I talked to the manager, Austin Johnson. You're really going to like him. He's what you would call your perfect asshole. you about those homicides that occurred last night. Maybe you can help us. Maybe you saw something. So, a couple of horny kids got themselves chopped up by some coop. So what? Besides, who the really gives a damn, huh? We do. That's why we're here. I told Van Heusen that closing down the carnival, opening this outdoor whorehouse, is going to bring nothing but problems. What carnival? Van Heusen's carnival, he operated right here on this very spot for 20 years. He closed it down about 15 years ago and opened up this trash heap. I managed the place and I spent the money and I booked the films and the projections too. Do you think you appreciate that all the work I do around here? I worked my ass off. Van Heusen, he couldn't care less. You know what he does, huh? 
Son of a bitch runs off to Hawaii, leaves me in charge, doesn't even pay me half a living wage. Drains my ass, I'll tell you. So you're around the theater quite a bit, then? Mm, every bloody damn day and night. Van Heusen thinks I married this toilet, but I didn't, and you better believe it. I believe you, sir. I don't doubt you for a minute. Uh, have you ever seen anyone strange around here? Someone you might think would be capable of something like this? Yeah, and I see them every night. Everybody that comes in here, they're crazy. And I see them all. You want to know why? Because when I get here, I got to come in and set up this refreshment stand because that broad I got working for me isn't even smart enough to pass first grade math. Bangers in there aren't ripping me off. I get out of there, I go to the projection room, and there I stay all night. I can't even get out of there when the movie's open. By then, everybody's gone home but me. Rough life. Now you bet your butt it is. Have you ever seen the victims before, anywhere, at any time? What, teenagers? Hey, ain't no difference. All one big zit with long hair. I've got two of them, Mr. Johnson. I'm sorry for you, buddy. It means teenagers, Mr. Johnson, not kids. Well, we sympathize with you, sir. You've got quite a workload. I wouldn't want to be in shape. Thanks a lot. You've been a help. I thought you said you were the only one here. That's a half wit he sweeps up around here. All the time, at night, too? He sleeps there. You really want to talk to that piece of puke? He works here, doesn't he? Hey, Jeremy! Get out of there! Van Houston keeps him around for a charity game. All he does around here is jerk off. Isn't that true? I work. Hey, you looking for suspect? Here, lock the geek up. Geek? I was one in the carnival. I, I lost all my teeth biting off snake heads and, and chicken heads, too. If I had my way about it, I'd have canned him a long time ago. How long have you worked here, sir? Sir? <laughs> His name's Jeremy. It's Garmy. The Great Garmy. Ta-da! Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest sword swallower in all He's so stupid he'd cut his own throat if I gave him a knife. Look, I gotta get to work. And you, when they get done with you, you get this place cleaned up, you understand? Mr. Garmy. Uh, Jeremy. My name is really Garmy, but my friends call me Jeremy. Do you have many friends, Jeremy? I used to. Lido and Hobo. Uh, they were the, the elephants at the carnival. Uh, but they're all gone now. What exactly is your job here, Jeremy? I sweep up, I keep the place clean. And I guard the place. I make sure nobody sneaks in. You like working here? Yes. Did you ever see anything strange, anything unusual occur here? No. Um, just the movies and the kids. But I like the kids. And Mr. Van Heusen will never let them get away with killing two young people. No, sir. Who? Whoever did it. Where were you when this happened? Uh, I found them. After everybody went home, I saw this car and I went over there there they were. Um, he had his head cut off. Had you ever seen the victims before? Probably. I probably see everybody who's ever been here. But, but they weren't troublemakers. What kind of troublemakers come around here? The kind that try to sneak in. Uh, but I chase them with my flashlight. There's one guy 
who always takes two spaces. Uh, so his car won't get scratched. You used to be a sword swallower. Do you still have any of those blades? Mr. Van Heusen lets me use his private collection. Van Heusen has a collection of blades? Oh, knives, swords, all kinds. He taught me my craft. But then I had my accident. Well, where is this collection now? Do you have any of it? Oh, no. Mr. Van Heusen has it. He takes it with him everywhere he goes. I think it's in India. Mr. Van Heusen's in Hawaii. Oh, well, then that's where he is. There's one guy who comes every night, and he's a troublemaker. Never stays in one spot. He's always looking for girls or a couple that are smooching. Uh, you know what I mean. I don't like him. He's here every night. Almost. What's he look like? Pasty face. Skinnier than Mr. Pins in the carnival. What kind of a car did you drive? Oh, Chevy. <laughs> Smashed in the back. He won't listen to me when I tell him to stay in one spot. He's always moving around. How old is he? I don't know. Uh, but, but he tries to look younger than he really is. You don't like Mr. Johnson, do you, Jeremy? He's a bully. Someday, somebody won't take that off him. Does he push a lot of people around? The people that work for him. He makes me talk to the big ones. Hey, you shithill! Yes, sir. Uh, I, I gotta go. Hey, Jeremy. Uh, when a guy comes here again, the one that keeps moving around from spot to spot... Yeah. Do us a favor and get his license number, okay? Okay. Take care now. How many people do you suppose there are like that? Like what? You know, did you do that sort of thing when you were a kid? Oh, you know, cruise the drive-in, try to pick up on the broad. Oh, yeah. Our driving just had a double murder. Yeah. You know, they may have closed that carnival, but the freaks are still hanging around, and we just talked to two of the choicest ones. Gee. Well, that other one we were talking about might be a freak, too, but I'd like to talk to him.
Sometime you're going to have to stand on your two feet and make a decision. I have made a decision. I love you, and it's not so easy. I just can't leave my wife like that. I've got, I've got two beautiful kids. I've got, uh, I've got responsibilities. She's not. I know you have responsibilities, but you have a responsibility to me, David. How long do you expect me to wait? I've Laura, been you're very patient. Laura, you're going to have to wait. You're going to have to. I'm telling you, you're going to have to wait. How long do I have to wait? David, you don't understand. I can't wait. What do you mean you can't wait? I mean, I can't wait. Oh, the time can, has to be now. You can wait, Lori. David, I'm pregnant. What are you going to do about it? What do you mean, what am I going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? <laughs> oh, boy. David, you have to make a decision tonight. You're right, you're right, you're right. Now! I'll tell Doris in the morning. I promise you I'll tell her in the morning. You're really pregnant. You're going to have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's super. Yeah? That's really nice. You don't mind? Not at all. I think it's uh, beautiful. That's great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's get some push-ups. Well, oh, I don't feel comfortable here. What's the matter? We always yeah, come here. Oh, didn't you hear those two people got killed here last night? Oh, yeah. That's right. Let's go. Now it'll nothing will ever happen to come here. Mm -hmm. Don't be silly. That was last night. Tonight's the night. We're together. Listen to the doc here, huh? He's going to uh, try to give us some idea of what we're what looking for, huh? Gentlemen, don't expect any miracles. So I'll do the best I can. The toughest thing about this kind of case is that 
there is no overall pattern for a psychotic killer. If there is any pattern at all, it becomes an individual thing. The M.O. remains the same and the weapon is usually the same. The most important thing for you to remember is this. The time between each killing gets shorter. One other odd fact. A psychotic killer is usually a man. When a woman is involved, it's rare and it's usually for financial gain. While the male is driven by lust, by passion, and by hate. I don't have to tell you guys how important this is, huh? So call in any man you need, whenever you need. And the doc here says that he's on call any time, all right? And keep me posted, huh? And when you get the goddamn coffee heated, So what do we got? Jeremy? Possible, but doubtful. Rule anybody out? No. We don't have any real proof on anybody. No, we got the weapon anyway. And no prints on it. Bring Jeremy in, will you? Okay, John. I wish. If there's one bust I'd like to make. It's certainly a possibility. Everybody's stuck in that projection booth. All right. Yeah. What about the guy that roams around all night? Now, I'd like to get a line on him. We're going to have to work a stake out if we're ever going to see him. Come on in, Charlie. Have a seat. Um, thank you. Thank you. Would you like some coffee? Oh, that would be good. Oh, with lots of sugar. I like lots of sugar. Jeremy, you recognize this? It was in those two young people. But I didn't touch it. Yeah, yeah I know. Foreigner didn't find your prints on it. You ever work with a sword like this? Uh, oh, yes, many times. You recognize this particular sword? No. You're sure it isn't part of the Van Heusen collection? Oh, no, I'm sure of that. I know all of them by heart. I learned with them. I worked with them many times. When you quit your act, who took over? Uh, Austin Johnson. But he was never any good. I taught him, but he was never any good. Mr. Van Heusen uh, worked with him, too. But he said he would never be as good as me. Yeah, he said that. Why not? Uh, he liked to chase the girls too much. And he could, couldn't keep his mind on the act. He was better as a barker. Actually, he was, he was scared of the knife. I see. So Van Heusen closed the carnival down and turned the land into a drive-in. Yeah? yeah. Doesn't it seem strange there are two former sword handlers, knife throwers, working at a place where four murders have been committed with swords, knives? Um, I don't know. I mean, Mr. Johnson was never any good. Uh, and and uh, I, 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 I haven't seen a knife before. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't like them anymore. I, I, I don't like them. So you found the bodies tonight. What did you do then? I, I called Mr. Johnson. Checks, he called. What were you doing before you found them? I was following uh, the guy who parked next to the car with the body. Who is he, Jeremy? The troublemaker. The one that always comes and never stays in one spot. His car was right next to the murder car? He got out of one side, and that's when I saw him. And then he uh, crawled in between the cars, and then I couldn't see him anymore. Then he crawled out from between the cars and he 
went to the bathroom. Who is he? I don't know. R really, I, I, I don't know. Oh, but I, I got his license number. Uh, just like you asked me to. I, I remembered. Maybe that will help. I hope so, Jeremy. I hope so. I'll check it out. Good guy or the bad guy? I don't care. Tail. You got it. officers. Can we come in? What do you want me for? We just want to ask you a few questions. I didn't do anything. Then you won't mind if we come in. Or perhaps you'd rather have the neighbors hear us. I understand that you were at the local drive-in theater the other night. Any law against going to the movies? No, but you were there again last night. <laughs> I like the picture. Is that all? That's all. What's this all about? Come on, Ingleson. You know what went down there last night? I heard something. And you were seen parked next to the victim's car. I don't know anything about that. Well, I didn't go to any car. I was watching a movie. You were seen going to the car, Mr. Ingleson. No, no, you don't. We have an eyewitness. You crawled out of your car to the victim's vehicle. What were you doing, pissing on the hubcaps? two bodies in that car. Well, not when I was there. Not when you were there. You know what that ink? You know what that is, Engelson? That's you. Yeah. That's your rap sheet, Engelson. Please, just leave me alone. How'd you work up nerve enough to do it? Huh? I didn't do anything. How'd you ram a sword through two people? That's a lie. Hey, no, oh, I didn't no, kill no, anybody. Man. Look, I couldn't do that. I just wanted to beat my knee. Look, we're not going to get anything out of him. This way is cool and open. Think he's soft enough for you to work with now? All right. Mr. Eagleson, have you got any knives or any swords in this house? Then you won't mind if my partner has a look around. No. Okay, Mike. Have a look. Marvel. 
What do you do for a living? I drive a truck. Get all over town, see lots of interesting things. Not so interesting. Check check out the chicks while I'm driving. You uh, got quite a collection. <laughs> really interesting pictures. No, no, I'm just a collector. Do you like them? They're pretty good, aren't they? Yeah, they're pretty good. Got some interesting books over there. Who knows? They might become collector's items someday. You know, kind of like funny books. <laughs> you never know. Yeah. We got a few of them around, don't they? Station. Don't they? You got any other interesting hobbies? Oh, I just go to the drive-in a lot. It's a hobby? I guess that's about all I do, you know. How did you know I was at the drive-in? Well, Mr. Engelson, you're just about like a fixture over there. As a matter of fact, I'm surprised you don't have a part-time job. Yeah, but nobody knows me. I mean, how did you know I was at the drive-in? Nobody knows my name there. That's all right. We knew you were there. What did you see when you were looking down into that car? I didn't see anything. You were seen going to the car, Mr. Eagleson. What happened to that girl? She's in pretty bad shape. Oh, yeah? She was murdered with a sword. Oh, I haven't got any sword. You sure about that? Kitchen knife. Everybody has a kitchen knife. You didn't see anything strange. Just, just me. Mr. Eagleson, my partner thinks you murdered those people. Did you? No. Can you prove it? I won't go back there again. Why not? Because we're on to you? I won't go back to that drive-in again. You don't go back. Your murders stop, and I come after you. Come on, Mike. Knock it off. I'm done. Mr. Engelson, you mind if we look through your car? Would you open it up for us? Uh, but listen, could you just act like we were friends, please? I mean, the neighbors, they, they don't know about my past. Please? Yeah, we can handle that. Sure is good to see you fellas again. It's been a long time. Yeah, I'm still driving the same old car. It's really been a peach. Yeah. Yeah. Tune it up myself. Uh, you ought, you ought to take a look in my trunk. Uh, you got a great collection of tools here. So I won't get ripped off by those mechanics. Got enough to do my own valve job, ring job. You really ought to take a...
didn't do anything. I didn't do anything. It was only a dog. Yeah. 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 Well, well, home home a dog. Yeah. Yeah. On my way home, I ran over a dog. <laughs> yeah, we know. Hey, Look, this, uh, I'm telling you. Yeah, I right. took it to the vets. The vets, the old man, get down a bit, Yes, sir. I'm sorry, Mike. I'm afraid it was dog. We had to release that Orville. has been done so many times. You've seen this picture twice? in a car in this place in one night. Generate. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful? It's trick for... Shh. 
Shh. You've seen this picture twice. Would you give me shh? Oh. I don't think you wanted to see this movie. You bet. I told you it was really good. Mm -hmm. And you have to see it. Jim, listen. Jim. Jim. And Novak. Daughter. You wouldn't give me the water rat. Oh, Jim. I needed him. Now you have to see this. Oh, I don't want to see you. Don't cross. I, I want to see you. You told me and the boys are going to pay him a visit. Don't cross. Where's that drink? Him. There he is. He's looking this way. Kiss me. Oh, get away from me, you idiot. <laughs> he bought it. I hope so. We don't need any more of that. Anything for my pension and welfare. Well, just stay on your side of the car. My God, married only two hours, and you don't want anything more to do with me. Well, it could be your bad breath. Jim, I think you brought me here for the wrong reason. I came here to see the movie. This is my favorite movie. I told you that. Oh, Jim. Well, then, damn it, you watch the picture by yourself. Koch, Mr. Leary, I've been watching him, and that's him over there in the white car. Some disguise. <laughs> yeah, we know, Jeremy. Just uh, move on, now, okay? Oh, I don't really have anything to do. I could stand here and help you watch him. Jeremy, it's all right. We got everything under control. We're, we know where he is. Why does he dress like that? Because he has very unusual taste in clothes. Jeremy. It's a part of the job, Jeremy. It's really kind of a nice dress. What the hell are you doing up here bothering people? You've got work to do and you don't do it. I'm... Oh, you goddamn cop. Excuse me, ma'am. What the hell are you doing here? What did you do? Come in here, flesh your badge, scaring hell out of my people? Or did you pay like everybody else? It's a public theater, isn't it? And we paid. Yeah. Well, don't bother my help. He's got work to do. Oh, I don't want to do it. Do what I told you. I don't. You hear me? Wait a minute. Huh? Huh? What? Oh, I, want to tell you, yes. I want it cleaned up, and damn it, you do what I tell you. you mix. Leave people alone. Don't bother them. Good work. Yes, sir. Uh, we should be halfway to Mexico by now. I agree. You know, it's about up to get out of here. Coast clear? There he hadn't moved. I mean, lost him in Germany. I don't see him around anymore. I gotta go take a leak. Where do I go? <laughs> Where do you usually go? This? <laughs> Going out in the bushes. Big help you are.
cruising. this at all, I can tell you. You pull in every damned idiot that works for me, and you let them all go, and they're probably back there right now ripping me off, and you keep me sitting here. One more time, John. We found out that you used to be a knife thrower, and we didn't find it out from you. Now, what are you trying to keep from us? Oh, bullshit. I haven't picked up a knife since the carny clothes. I didn't like it that much anyway. Why did you do it? Because I like barking less, okay? A ham sandwich? Better be careful, you might beat me your father. Just answer the questions. Oh, for Christ's sakes, you, you got the brains of a piece of wet liver. Lettuce, tomatoes, mustard, mayo, I can't eat that puke. Mr. Johnson. I can arrange it so you can eat all the cold spam and hard bread that you want to. Yeah, well, it's better than that crap. Now look, damn it, I gotta get out of here. Business is booming and I gotta keep my eye on everything. Johnson, we want you to close it down anyhow. Are you crazy? We haven't done this much business since the place opened. We can get a court order and close it for you. Well, that's the only damn way you're gonna do it. We're trying to catch a killer, Mr. Johnson. Yeah, and a pretty poor job you're doing of it, too. Three cars away from where you're sitting wiped out two more of them right underneath your snout. You know, if your partner was no one at all, you'd caught him never was. But instead of that, he sits over there, pulling all my help away. He cuddling with that ugly-looking broad he was with. Uh, you, you don't happen to have a sister, do you? Oh, that wasn't his sister. Get away from me! Man, you smell like you've been sleeping in a pig pen. You just mad at me because I found... Look, you piece of filth! But I'll tell you something else. When you get out of here, and you come down to the theater and you pick up your stuff. I don't want to see you around there again. <laughs> All right, that's about enough. Now shut up. No, goddammit. You pigs hauled me down here and you kept me here all night and half the damn day. I got to get back to work. I got a business to run. And I got to keep my eyes on everything. You're going to run your business from the slammer before long if you don't shut up. Yeah? Well, you either charge me and lock me up or get off of my back. Or let me go, because I don't give a damn if half of L.A. gets chopped up. Now what are you going to do? Get out of here. You know what I tell you? When you get out of here, you come to the theater and you pick up your stuff. You understand? Yeah. Oh, how I wish it was that foul mouth son of a bitch. You want some coffee? No, thanks, Jeremy. We got a lot of work to do. Oh, okay. Well, let's go get my stuff. Keep in touch. Let us know where you are. Ta-da! You're looking for him here. Good luck for Geek Up. Now, you used to be a sword swallower. Do you still have any of those blades? Van Houston keeps them around here for a charity case. All he does around here is jerk off. Isn't that true? I work.
sure you want to talk to a piece of puke? It's Garmin. The great Garmin. Jensen's? Excuse me, Captain. Hold on just a minute. Yeah. You got it. They got a guy cornered in Jensen's warehouse. Just wiped out two people with a machete. Sounds like him. Excuse me, Captain. I think we got something going on. Set you free. <laughs> you, you, you like that? Right? Set you free so you don't have to put up with this lousy world anymore. Right? You want me to set you free? God damn you, answer me! I was wrong about you, little girl. You do still have some meanness in you. Don't worry, though, honey. I'm gonna cut all that poison out. You just stand still now, dear. 
I'm, I'm coming, honey. Come now.
you have to kill him? Yes, we did, honey. He's killed a lot of people. He didn't mean to. My father, he didn't mean to kill my mother and my aunt. He's been sick. He broke out of the hospital just this morning. Damn, I'm sorry about that little girl. I don't want to kill our old man. I almost blew it last night when Austin came out of that projection booth and grabbed Jeremy. Hey, do you realize that he can come out of that projection booth during the movie? Between real changes. Mike, you're right. Let's go get that bald-headed garbage can. fired me. But I want to show him that I'm not mad. I've got a going away present for him. In here. Jimmy, he said he'd kill you if he saw you again. He can't kill me. But he hates you. He hates me because I've got Mr. Van Heusen's knife and sword collection. And I'm gonna keep it. Austin's been hiding it. But I'll show him. Jimmy, don't you understand? He came in here madder than hell tonight. He bawled all of us out and told us if we saw you to tell you to leave. He owes me money. I've got to get that. Please, Jeremy. I want my money. And give him his present. Oh, my God. 